yourself on the information. All right, um, so diving right in, um, a little bit of information as far as Robinson and our numbers. Um, these numbers are from our spring 2023 um, intake of students. Um, as you will see to your very left, we were just under 1,700 students, very diverse with 54% female and 46% male, um, comprised of 66% domestic students from the U.S. Um, and 34% international. Um, and that 34% um, came from over 75 countries. Um, 29 came from the states and D.C. as far as our population. Um, and as you will see, the average age is 31 years. Um, and so that does include, you know, students coming straight out of undergrad, um, as well as some of our more seasoned students who are already in their careers and looking to come back and just kind of upskill themselves. Um, one thing that I like, you know, 55% historically excluded population. Um, and so you'll see a lot of diversity here at Robinson, specifically in the Institute of Health. Um, and in the far right, you'll see 18 of our graduate programs. Um, so there's something here for just about everyone um, in a very diverse, diverse excuse me, population um, and diversity of our portfolio of programs offered. So uh, today we're just gonna briefly talk about what is health administration? Um, why Robinson, um, and kind of the next steps to proceed. And as I mentioned previously at the tail end, um, I will open it up for questions. So what exactly is health administration? Health administration is that marriage between business and healthcare or the business of healthcare. Um, and so, you know, wanted to be very clear that this is not the medical side of healthcare. This is the business side of healthcare. Um, as far as the administering and running the business side of healthcare. Um, and that is something that our faculty directors look into. Um, and want to make sure that our students are our fellows on this. And again, just to mention, um, if you could, when you come in, um, mute yourself. Uh, and towards the end part, we will open for questions. Yeah. And then they said on site, on site, and, and the whole thing doesn't make this, and there's 75,000. All right, so, so moving on. Why Robinson uh, for Health Administration? So we're gonna look at the team, um, the choices you have, as well as the results. So here you'll see um, our faculty and, and some of our, our professors. Um, and the biggest thing to know is you're gonna learn from world-class researchers who have strong corporate ties. Um, so our faculty, um, you know, are definitely still tied to the boots on the ground and have a great understanding of what's, what are our industry trends and the things that our students need to know to be successful post-graduation. Um, so you'll see, I won't go through everybody, you can take a second to look, but definitely want to introduce to you guys um, Dr. Christopher Johnson. He wasn't able to be here with us today, um, but he is the director of our IHA, um, as well as some of the faculty and staff. Um, we do have Heather Martin with us today. Uh, she's a little under the weather, but she's waving at you guys and wishing you the best. Um, she will connect with us a little bit later in the semester once she's feeling a little bit uh, better. Um, but I did want to say welcome and thank you for being with us today. And so as far as your administrative team, you'll see, you know, me there to the left and kind of it's a progression here. Um, and so as the graduate recruiter, my job is to be with students basically from inquiry all the way until acceptance. Um, so I am here throughout the application phase for any questions you may have, um, or just questions about the university and the program. Uh, once students are admitted and accepted to the program, you'll see the three to the right. Um, um, so again, guys, as you're coming in, please definitely mute yourself. It's quite a few of us. Um, and again, we will open for questions uh, towards the end. So if you can make sure that you're muted, um, uh, please do that at this time. Um, but again, to the right, what you'll see is kind of what we quote as your success team, um, Jermaine Clark. He's the interim director of our student experience team. Um, student experience, um, they're putting together a portfolio, a, a robust set of programs for our students um, as they're in the program. So, you know, networking, experiential trips, um, things of that sort. So you'll connect with, you know, Jermaine Clark and his team, you know, once you're accepted, um, as well as Lauren McDowell. She's the director of the Career Advancement Center. 
Um, so career advancement is really there to help students, you know, day one, once they're into the program, um, helping them to be ready to, you know, make a career pivot or to upskill yourself and, and kind of gain those jobs you're looking for. Um, and so that's Lauren McDowell. And to the very right, who you'll see is Tracy Mitchell. Um, she is the academic advisor for the program. So dual MBA, MHA, as well as the MSHA, she's going to be your person uh, to cre help create those schedules for you guys that are going to best be a good fit for you while you're in the program. Again, don't have to memorize all that today, but just know that they are there uh, for your assistance once you're accepted into the program. Um, and here, you know, talking about our alumni, um, over 80,000 alumni, more than 40,000 of those live here in the metro Atlanta area. Um, and this is just a snapshot of, of some of our alumni, our recent alumni. And so I'll pause for a second and kind of let you guys take a look at each one of those photos and, you know, see where these alumni are now in their careers. And I spoke before about um, Lauren McDowell and the Career Advancement Center. You know, a lot of our, our alumni are very active in um, connecting with our current students. And so attending these networking events while you're in the program could be quite beneficial uh, for you to be able to learn, you know, a little bit more about what it looks like post-graduation. So talking about the choices you have, uh, the MSHA and the MBA MHA dual degree. Um, the dual degree is about 60 credits. Most students finishing in 24 months. Um, what we're looking for as far as the dual degree, as far as work experience, one to four years. Um, and students who have a desire to gain that managerial or executive position. Um, so learning more about the breadth and depth of business um, and how that applies to health administration. Um, the MSHA is a shorter, more specialized program. Most students completed in 12 to 16 months. Um, looking for students who have four or more years work experience. Um, and those students who are looking uh, to advance in their career in health management, leadership, um, data analytics, health informat informatics, and finance. So taking a little bit more of a deeper dive as far as the curriculum, um, with the dual degree, you're going to get eight MBA courses. And some of those examples are, you know, finance, analytics, and leadership. Uh, you'll take one business elective course. Um, these are just a few entrepreneurship, risk management, project management, and then you'll take 11 health administration courses. And there are a couple of examples, health policy, health finance, um, strategic management. Um, and four of those will replace the MBA courses. So the beautiful thing about the dual MBA MHA, uh, you are gaining two degrees um, and you're able to compress them down. And some of those MBA courses um, are replaced with those health information, um, excuse me, health administration courses. Um, and then you will take one experiential learning course. And so there's the internship, project, residency, or fellowship. Again, the MSHA uh, is more compressed, more specialized. Um, so you'll take seven health administration courses. There are a few examples. And then you'll take three elective, electives, excuse me. Um, so business electives, entrepreneurship, risk management, project management, or you can select health administration electives, um, such as health analytics or experiential learning. And so early in the presentation, I spoke about Jermaine Clark and his team, the student experience team. Um, again, they have quite a robust schedule and calendar of co-curricular and extracurricular activities you can be involved in while you're in the program. Um, again, and these are just two. Um, so the Business Alliance for Healthcare Management Education Case Competition, um, this is from 2019. Um, and then the NASI Case Competition, they were the winners in November of 2018. And so to pause for just a second, um, you know, gaining that experience and those skills outside of the classroom, the networking. Um, and again, just to add to it, you know, with most of these competitions, there is the eligibility to have, you know, a cash prize and that goes to the students. Um, it does not go to us. And so, you know, gaining an experience, connecting with some of your, your colleagues um, in that space, um, as well as possibly, you know, winning some, some prizes. Um, and again, you know, really adding to your tool set outside of the classroom. And so um, you definitely connect with Jermaine Clark and his student experience team to learn more about some of our experiential um, opportunities once you're in the program.
And so the results, um, return on investment, um, making the decision, you know, to to earn a graduate degree is definitely an investment in yourself, um, your career. Um, and so kind of looking, you know, from our, our numbers from 2022, um, 20% um, notated, excuse me, a 22% salary increase, um, 100% employment from our 2020 graduates um, within three months of degree completion. Um, and again, here's a list of, of some of those employers. And so I, I won't go through them. You can kind of take a look. Uh, but these are definitely, you know, some who's who institutions here in Atlanta. And so, you know, if you've already liked some of what you hear, here are some of the steps how you can proceed. And so, you know, looking forward, looking first um, at the cost. Um, so for our MSHA, our cohort program, um, for our in-state or domestic students, that would be $41,100. Um, for our out-of-state or international students, you'd be looking at $47,000. Um, and for our dual degree, um, so that's the Flex MBA MHA program, um, you'd be looking at $15,519 average yearly cost for our in-state students um, and $35,858 average annual cost out of state. And so looking at financing your investment, uh, to the right there, you will see our graduate student financial services. Um, there's their information as far as their email and their phone number, um, and they'll be able to help assist you with um, federal student aid, grad plus loans, um, and private education loans. Um, one of the many questions that I get is pertaining to, you know, our GRA positions. And so um, our merit-based scholarship um, those typically go to our students who have, you know, the highest academic profile, and that includes, you know, GPA, um, as well as GRA and GMAT scores. Um, and so understand GMAT and GRA are not required um, for admission to the program. Um, but if you definitely want to uh, bolster your application and know that you are seeking either a merit-based or a general GRA, you are feel free to add those. Um, and we consider a 300 or better um, on the GRA and 600 and, excuse me, GRE, um, and 600 and better on the GMAT to be competitive. Um, so again, you don't have to add those scores. You don't have to rush out and take those. Um, but if you have taken it or feel that you want to add to your academic profile, um, feel free to take that and add that to the equation um, if you're looking for a merit-based scholarship. We also have graduate research assistant positions, um, our GRAs. Um, so for students who are not selected for the merit-based, um, you can search for a general GRA and the way that works once you're accepted to the program, um, you'll get a link to our, our profile called Handshake. You'll go into Handshake, add your resume, add a profile, and then you'll be able to see all of the open GRA positions in Robinson as well as GSU as a whole. Um, there's also the opportunity to have department-specific scholarships. Um, and those are typically for students after their first semester. Um, and so they kind of look at how you did your first semester, your grades and things of that sort. Um, and so that is something that you can look into after your semester, your first semester um, and make sure that, you know, you're doing your best academically to apply for those department specific scholarships. And so here we'll look at the application deadline. So, so first, um, for our international students for spring and fall, you want to take um, special um, attention to those that have asterisks. Um, that, those allow for more time to process the visa and I-20 and things of that sort. Um, so you'll see our spring admission. Uh, we've already passed August 21st. Um, the next deadline for application will be October 16th, um, reaching a decision by December 1st. Um, we have one application deadline for summer. Um, that's going to be March 18th uh, with the decision deadline of May 10th. And then you'll see um, our rounds for the fall. Um, so October the 16th will be coming up the first, and then that'll be followed by our January 22nd um, application deadline. Um, you can also find these deadlines online on our um, webpage. Um, but if you want to take a moment to take a picture or um, just kind of jot it down, I'll give you guys a second before I move on to the next slide.
Um, another very cool feature that we have um, connecting with the current students. So if you'd want to um, scan that QR code, I get a lot of questions sometimes like, you know, what does a typical week look like? Um, in this program or, you know, what is the course load like or some students who are moving here who have never been to Georgia or specifically Atlanta, what are some great places to live? Um, here you can connect with the current student that are, that's in our program and ask those questions from them. Um, so again, scan that, co that um, QR code, take a picture of it and come back to it later. Um, but this is a great way to get some more specific information as far as what the program looks like from the viewpoint of a student. Um, and another thing to note for students who might be looking for a GRA, um, Lily um, in the middle, she's in our MBA program. She is a GRA. Um, Lauren, um, who is in the MIB program, Master of International Business, um, she's a student. She has a GRA. Um, and so any of those kind of GRA centered questions, you know, what that's like, what does that 12 to 16 hours look like per week? Um, you can reach out to them and kind of get some specific information. And so I know that might have been a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, so the many time I'll open up for questions. Um, but thanks everybody um, for you know going through the presentation with me. Um, I know that many of you have questions about the application fee waiver. That's a big question I get usually. Um, and here are the steps. Um, so first, you want to complete and submit your application without paying the fee. Um, complete submit. We are able to, you know, waive the fee, but we cannot do refunds. So make sure you complete and submit your application without making the fee. Um, once you do that, um, you'll email RCB new applicant at gsu.edu. Don't need to add anybody else to that email. Just email those guys. Let them know that you attended the webinar today. Um, give them the date and the webinar. Um, they'll confirm, you know, the program of interest. Um, and please allow a week for processing. Um, your waiver will be applied directly to your application. Um, and again, please note the fee waiver attached to the webinar is only for students applying to the Master of Science and Health Administration or the MBA MHA program. Um, here I've listed my email. Again, I know this is kind of a, a, a big overview. Um, so if you have any specific questions and we don't get to it today and you want to email me, um, there's my email at the bottom of the screen, rchristian8 at gsu.edu. So that concludes the presentation portion of today's webinar. Um, I will open it up to questions. There's quite a